Oh yes, I remember early days well enough. I think it must have been 12, 13 years ago at this point. Ragnar and I uh, and Tommy Strand, who was like uh, one of the most instrumental uh, people of, of making this game. Uh, we sat down in, in Ragnar's house in Ytterenebakk. And uh, started envisioning the, uh, the ideas that would eventually become Anarchy Online. Um, creating basically a whole universe. It's a long way from there to here. Too long to ever go back. This is where I began my journey. Where humanity began its journey. Our perspective was narrow. We thought we knew everything. Happy or not, we were safe from the darkness. But sooner or later, humanity had to stop crawling and start walking. We had to explore. We had to lift stones, cross bridges, climb mountains, test the limits of our reality. We had to brave the unknown. We had to make ourselves noticed. So we ended up here, on the very fringes of where our technology will ever take us. This far, and no farther. Rubika. I'm a bit unsure exactly how we ended up with science fiction because that's one of the that's one of the great mysteries of, of those early days. But there was a lot of people loving this and that, and I think it was sort of, sort of a collective decision from quite a few other people, especially the programmers who were the only ones coming to the game in the beginning. But the game was very sort of a basic idea at that point. It really didn't have a vision or, or any kind of direction. So I think the, the story fed the game and the game fed the story as is always the case when you know a very creative process going. I turned six when it took me to see where the first colonists had landed. We had a lot of huge ambitions, and I think you know our sense of perspective and realism were probably, uh, you know, not in tune with reality always. But but we sort of we always thought that you know we can do anything, we can we can pull anything off. So that was sort of the outset. I remember I wasn't very impressed. I'd expected something monumental, but there was only concrete and steel and holographic plaque inscribed with Omnitech corporate propaganda. There were some people in the management who thought that uh, online games was the future. I need to say though that the rest of the organization thought they were insane. Crackpots uh, really just out there on the land. At first, Ruby Car wasn't much more than a mining outpost. The workforce had been brought in from the asteroid belts and drilling operations on Mars. And Omnitech figured the miners would be pliant and expendable. Their mistake. When, when Funcom started Anarchy Online, I mean, nobody had really done this. I mean, you had Ultima Online came out and then eventually EverQuest came out. But at the outset, it was, you know, there, was, there were a lot of MUDs around and, and multiplayer games, but nothing, of, nothing on that scale and especially nothing with that kind of attention to detail and, and scope behind it. Um, and it was uh, a time of optimism. I think that uh, it would be hard to start off something like that today. My father said that the rebellion changed everything, and not just for the better. It's never that simple. Still, there's no home without freedom. And we needed freedom, because we wanted to make Rubicar our home. There was a... a um really high hopes for doing new things. That's what we tried to do with Anarchy Online. It was very ambitious on all levels. And I still think in many, many ways uh, there haven't come any game after Anarchy Online who has beat uh, that particular brand, that particular style of um, ambition that we had in that game. My father taught me how to use a gun. Back then, the Anarchy Online uh, was envisioned to have a a life cycle, a storyline that would end after four years. Sometimes, late at night, I wonder if I'll ever be able to put it down. And people didn't get the concept of MMO, so the journalists were like, four years? Are you mad? Four years? That's a long time. No way you're going to last maybe one year. And here we are, seven years later, and it's still going strong. <laughs> I 
I started out on Anarchy Online much like everybody else. I began as a player first and uh, really enjoyed the game myself. I was first introduced to Anarchy Online as a player, uh, much like uh, you know many thousands of other people at the launch of the game. Uh, I picked it up in a store and you know experienced the game for the first time purely as a player. Uh, the graphics I think was just fantastic for the time it came out. This was released at a time where uh, uh, other products I won't mention, you know, character models had square arms, uh, low poly counts, uh, the, the textures, it, it, they looked terrible. And this gave uh, people characters that looked like proper people. People could relate to their character, they could spend time, hours and hours and hours, just dressing them up and finding different outfits for, for them to wear. Since the dawn of time, we've been fighting. Our warfare began with fists, clubs, and stones, waged at close quarters. Now our aggression knows no boundaries. We fight not only from the air, but from outer space, from beyond the last frontier. If it can be seen, we can destroy it. I've always been a fan of science fiction and fantasy, and uh, Anarchy Online really grabbed me uh, as a player. So for the first uh, two years of the game's existence, I uh, played the game much like anybody else. And I stuck with it for many, many years, even after I started working on it. Anarchy Online was uh, not the first MMO I ever played, uh, but it's one of the MMOs I look back on and really think that this was the best MMO ever at that time. One day we turned our eyes upwards again, and this time someone looked back. I think uh, the players that actually play Anarchy Online are very dedicated players. It takes a lot to actually come over that first start of the game. It's uh, a lot of challenges. It's a very complex game. But as soon as you get past that barrier, almost to put it that way, it rewards you tenfold time back. You really come out feeling that you have accomplished something. You have actually beaten the game. Our player base is, is somewhat mature. Our player base is not, it's not necessary to to, to spoon feed our, our player base uh, simple information. Uh, they're explorers, pioneers. Uh, they like to find things out for themselves. I've always said that you needed like a PhD to really love Anarchy Online, <laughs> especially in math. I have a story I remember from 2001 where we got an email from operations of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and they had to limit uh, the bandwidth going out of their university because so much went to Anarchy Online, so they had to shut it down during the day because we impeded their operations. You know, so many people were playing it. And that was just like, you know, the um, uh, that just was the epiphany of uh, lots of uh, smart MIT people sitting there <laughs> playing Anarchy Online. <laughs> so I think that was one of the I think that was one of the problems, but I also think that's one of the strengths. It's a really left-brain-centric game. I think if anyone had told me seven years ago that uh, I'd be sitting here doing an interview as game director for Anarchy Online, I'd probably have the men in white coats come and drag you away. To be able to take over a team of such dedicated people uh, was a, an amazing responsibility to be given. I think I'm grateful for the people that are around me because we have a fantastic team. One of the key defining parts of the team is that they're all players. Everyone has been hired from the player base. Whenever we do recruitment now, we look for people that have that same passion and dedication to the game uh, that we have ourselves. And that's how the people that found me found me. And that's how we find the people that are going to go forward and be the next generation. It's such a a knowledgeable, experienced team. They've been around there for so many years, they know the game so well, and everybody on the team loves the game. And it really is an excellent team to work on. So that's something I really loved back in the days in Anarchy Online. 
even though I haven't worked on it for a long time, I still feel a lot of pride about the project and I follow it, you know, from the sidelines. Uh, watching the guys today do a really, really great work and I am really happy about the community that goes on and that it has evolved and changed since the days, my days, and has become even better and, you know, just different. Different from uh, what I could have done with it. Um, and in many, many ways better. Obviously, we'd like Anarchy Online to keep going for another seven years. So behind the scenes, we're constantly working towards new technology and making sure that we can keep the game up to date for the modern era. So at the moment, we are working on implementing new render ending options so that we can bring some special effects and some different graphical effects to make the game world feel more alive and feel more modern. I've seen the upgrades to the graphic engine and uh, it looks fantastic. So I think this is a game that will be around for a very, very long time. The engine, the code, the mechanics, we're only limited by our own creativity at this point. Uh, there are many different areas for us uh, left to explore, and there's a lot of unanswered questions that I'm sure the players would uh, really enjoy seeing a, an end or a resolution to. I think Anarchy Online has a, has a shining future. I mean, it's been going seven years. Once you've gone seven years, you might as well just go, keep going. <laughs> so hopefully it'll still be around seven years from now and we can sit here and uh, me looking a lot older and talk about it again. <laughs>